Greetings, Series 7 test takers. This is the Series 7 Guru. I'm coming to you from my studio in fabulous Las Vegas. Uh, recently, last week or so, there's been a lot of people who are getting hung up on short accounts. So I thought I'd do a little carve out uh, for you on just uh, short margin accounts. So that's what we're going to be doing in uh, this lecture. I would uh, refer you to three other margin lectures I have a full-blown lecture called Don't Overdose on Margin. Again, don't overdose on margin. There's only three or four questions on the exam. Unfortunately, we don't know which three or four, so oh uh, well. Uh, I have one on the $2,000 stupid but testable for a new account. I've got a carve out a little smaller lecture on uh, market value and maintenance. And this will be our fourth uh, lecture. I also cover uh, short accounts in a lecture on bearish transactions. That's a whole hour on just all the various bearish things you can do, including selling short the stock. All right, so let's get a whiteboard and let's knock this one out. All right, so uh, as we said, we're going to be selling short and uh, I'm going to be doing an opening sale. Very testable. Opening sales are used to establish or add to short positions. So the two positions we have at a brokerage firm are long and short. You know, we're establishing a short position. We're going to be doing an opening sale. So I'm going to borrow some stock from my broker dealer. Now, whether I want to borrow money or borrow stock, I need a margin account. All short sales must be conducted in a margin account. There's only one exception to that, and that would be I could do an opening sale or go short a call on stock that I own without a margin account. Other than that, I need a margin account. So I'm going to borrow, whether I want to borrow money or borrow securities. Here, I want to borrow securities. And so I'm going to call my broker. And I'm going to say, listen, I'd like to borrow 1,000 shares of Zoom. And so I'm going to need a margin account. They said, well, Dean, there is a locate requirement. So let's see if we have a customer who has signed the loan consent form. You know, when you open a margin account, one of the pieces of documentation is called a loan consent form, where we actually ask if it would be okay to lend customers like Dean your stock so that he can establish a short position. And you say, well, I don't think it's in my best interest to do that, and it's not. And that's why that uh, form, very testable, is optional. Now, if my firm can't borrow the stock for one of its customers, it can get the stock elsewhere. They can call stock loan if... For example, I'm a Merrill Lynch customer. They could call Morgan Stanley stock loan and see if we can borrow it. Now, if it's a stock that pays a dividend, I'm going to have to make the lender a hold on whatever those dividends are, right? Because I'm going to borrow their stock and you know we need to be able to credit their account for whatever dividends there are. So let's say in my example, I want to borrow 1,000 shares of uh, Zoom. You know, I'm going to sell Zoom high, buy it back low. In most businesses, selling things you don't own is called fraud, but not in our business. And the assumption is here that maybe, you know, as a bear, I love Zoom, by the way, I'm just making this up. But, you know, my assumption here is that uh, Google has uh, got uh, com competitive products that are free and Microsoft Teams and, you know, uh, you know, Zoom has got to compete now. WebEx, where the founder of Zoom began his career. And so I think, uh, uh, you know, they're going to have problems. And let's say I'm able to do that at $80 a share. And this is where most people get hung up. Where most people get hung up is on the classical margin equation. So what we have to be able to do is what's called the setup. So what we want to be able to do as a test taker is an initial setup. And, you know, the phraseology on the test would be your customer sells short a thousand shares of Zoom and makes the required deposit. And then what we want to be able to do is a mark to market. So we want to be able to do our initial setup and a mark to market. So we're going to get $80,000 from selling the borrowed stock. And so let's put that there. And then we're going to have to put the Reg T requirement with that. So the Reg T requirement is going to be Reg T, remember, is half. So let's just put that here. I'm going to have $40,000 in my Reg T requirement. Half of that. That's what I initially got to be risk at for of the market value. 
And so the classical short equation, which I would know, is the credit register. As I said, this is where most people get hung up. Where did that come from, the credit register? So there's $120,000 in cash in my account. Forty grand from selling the stock I didn't own, plus the 40000 I had to put with it. And so initially what I'm going to have is 120000 in what we call the credit register. Again, that's the $80,000 from selling the borrowed stock plus the $40,000 I had to put with it. That's where most people get hung up. And I owe securities presently valued at $80,000. So in a long account, what you owe is money. In a short account, what you owe are securities. And so this is called the classical margin equation short. Classical meaning you need to know it. So there's the classical... Uh, margin account long, long market value minus debit equals equity. And there's the classical margin equation short, which is credit register minus short market value equals equity. There's a classical balance sheet equation. Assets minus liabilities equals uh, net worth. And so we definitely want to be able to do the classical margin equation because if we can't do the classical margin equation, we can't set this up. Because after we set it up, then we're going to have to do what's called a mark to market, a mark to market. So first major thing we want to make sure we can do is this, you know, this classical margin equation, which is credit register minus short market value equals equity. So that's pretty important in terms of how this goes. Now, what we're going to do next is a mark to market. As you can see right here, as it stands right now, we are perfectly balanced. How often is people perfectly balanced? Usually like on day one. And then they'll say, you know, on the test, the test phraseology would become something like this. Uh, your client sells short 1,000 shares of XYZ at 80 and makes the required deposit. You know, several days later, you know, then they do what I call a time clock question. Now, you might uh, be sending out negative vibes and say, Dean, well, you know, what if this doesn't go down? What if the Zoom goes up? I said, well, that'll be really bad because <laughs> you know, there's a finite supply of Zoom stock and potential infinite demand. And so we should definitely recognize that uh, selling short subjects our client to unlimited risk. You know, we do have two risk mitigation strategies. One thing we might wanna do is enter a buy stop, you know, to stop the loss. And another thing we might wanna do is buy a protective call to mitigate the risk. If we buy the protective call, by the way, we would no longer have unlimited risk. So that would be something we could do as risk mitigation strategies. In fact, let's just put that. Strategies for short stock positions. You know, I've got separate lectures on that. That's not what we're gonna be doing today. You say, well, Dean, uh, how far up, or what is, uh, how far up could it go before I would have a problem? And I say, well, you know, at all times, you got to have 30% of the market value as maintenance. The house requirement can always be more stringent. It just can't be more lenient. And so that is minimum maintenance on a short position, 30% of the market value. I'll get out of my calculator here because I'm terrible at arithmetic. And so 30% of that, 80,000. Now, remember the 80,000 now, the market value is on that second line is 24,000 is minimum maintenance. And right now that's not a problem. And you say, well, Dean, I didn't ask you what is uh, minimum maintenance. Be careful what you're being asked on the test, RTFQ, read the full question. Remember the customer says, Dean, I didn't ask you what is minimum maintenance. I said, how far up could the account go before there would be a problem? And I said, well, gee, why are you sending out negative energy like that? <laughs> I said, well, we have a formula to determine market value and maintenance. And so maybe this would be helpful about where to put in our buy stop or where to put it up the strike price of our call contract. And the way we calculate market value and maintenance is we take the credit register and we divide by 1.3 and that equals market value and maintenance. So in our example, let's get a bigger font here. In our example, let's get a different color. 
and boom, there's our market value and maintenance formula. And so in our example, we would take the uh, credit register, which is $80,000, and we would divide that. Whoop, the credit register, which is 120,000. We divide by 1.3, and we find out in this example, if the zoom, remember we're shorting 1,000 shares of zoom here at 80, 120,000 divided by 1.3 is uh, $92,307. Yeah, close enough. So $92,307.69, we'll call it 0. 0.70. So if the Zoom, we remember we've got 1,000 shares here. So if the Zoom goes above $92.30, basically, we're going to have a problem. So that's going to be market value at maintenance. So maybe we put our buy stop at uh, 92 or put our buy a strike, a call with a strike price of uh, 90, for example, in terms of uh, risk mitigation. Okay, so then they say, uh, the, so that's kind of our initial transaction setup. And then they say the stock goes to. You know, the stock either goes up or down, right? Remember here, we wanted to go down. And so what we could uh, maybe say several weeks later, Zoom is at 60. Several weeks later, Zoom is at 60. So the first thing, thing we want to know is that 60 is good news. So if now Zoom is $60 a share. And we do our mark to market. That's what we're going to be doing here is a mark to market at 60. Let's get a different color. And now, so the key on these margin questions, by the way, is to be able to do what we're doing. You got to be able to do initial setup, and then you got to be able to do a mark to market. And to do the mark to market, remember, you got to know the classical margin equation. So we still have $120,000 in our account. You know, this is the thing people get hung up on. Where did the grand come from? Remember, that came from selling the stock we didn't own, plus the money we had to put with it. So we had $120,000 in the short account. We still have $120,000 in the short account. Now, if we went in the open market, bought back the borrowed stock and gave it back to the person we borrowed it from, we wouldn't have to come up with 80,000 bucks. Now, we're not suggesting you close the account, but equity always represents what you would have if you close the account. Nobody's suggesting you do that. And what we're interested in, again, is being able to do the mark, right? So now we got our mark. And if you decided to close this out today, nobody's suggesting you do that. But if you did, you would have $60,000 in equity. Please note, you have made $20,000 from the stock going down, right? So in our business, you can make money from stocks going up. Our stock's going down. It looks like I just found out that, uh, you know, that's the other reason you want to have a process here, is that is 60000 and short market value. By the way, if you have a process, I can't tell you how many people will be watching my lectures sometimes, and before they see me catch myself, they start sending me nasty emails like, oh, you messed up, you know. <laughs> so one of the reasons you want to have a process is so you can do this. By the way, if you see something, say something. I mean, God, there's 200 hours of content on the channel. And every once in a while, I call it verbal errata or I have a brain fart. And if you find that, you know, just send me an email. Before you do, please check the video description because most of the time you'll find that I've caught myself and made the correction. Anyways, now you say, hey, Dean, uh, when I was long and the stock went my way, when I was long and the stock went my way, uh, I could use it as excess equity. I could use it as cash, that excess equity, and I could have buy additional securities. Uh, I had this thing called a special memorandum to my account, SMA, a holding tank for my excess equity. Does that work uh, similarly in terms of a short account? I said it most certainly does. It most certainly does. If you're a customer who picks stocks that go the right way, we're willing to advance you a further loan. So that's why we got to be able to do the uh, you know classical margin equation and then do the mark. So now where most people get hung up, I'm not so sure I should tell you where most people get hung up, but where most people get hung up is this uh, you know mark here, not realizing that what we're looking at here is the second line, right? This is what we're using to do the mark. 
By the way, the salmon along again is just now it shows up as the second ledger line. So now we're going to compare that to reg T, and reg T of that is $30,000. So that is the reg T requirement. You know, what reg T says is you have to be at risk for at least half, and right here you're at risk for 60, and reg T sees 30. So you have $30,000 in excess equity. You have $30,000 in excess equity. You know, for, for test purposes, for test purposes, I don't think you would have any problem if you thought of excess equity and SMA as one of the same. They're not actually, but, you know, for test purposes, I don't think that would cause you a problem. So I say, hey, listen, as it stands today, as it stands today, let me get a different color here. You have $30,000 in excess equity. And you say, Dean, do I have to do something today? Now, if I told you you had to use this today or you'd lose access to it, you might use it in a way that's not in your best interest. So I say, no, you don't have to use the uh, $30,000 today. So today you could have that as cash or you could use it to increase the position. You know, in, in the long position, remember, you could uh, buy more and here you can sell more. As I said, I don't think for test purposes, again, all test prep vendors go way overboard on short accounts, way overboard. And I don't think uh, you would be at risk if you thought of this as uh, excess equity and SMA as one of the same. In other words, if you wanted to, I think you could do this and not put yourself at risk. However, however, that's not actually true. You know, what I do, if you don't use this today, either as cash or to buy additional securities, I make a special memorandum to your account that on today you had 30,000 in excess and two times that is your selling power. So that's what that would look like. You know, the reason that's important, by the way, is because every day is a new day. Again, I'm trying to avoid not going into the weeds with you because that's not what we're trying to do here. But every day is a new day. So this is going to go by by, right? The ledger entries go by by except for the holding tank. So that's what goes disappears every day is a new day. And this was yesterday's news. And so as a margin clerk, what stays is the uh, SMA, the entries I've made. What I'm going to bring forward day to day is your high water mark or low water mark, depending on what it is. That's what remains at the end of each day. So uh, right now, as it stands, you can have uh, $30,000 as cash, or you could uh, sell short an additional, whoop, you could sell short an additional 60000 All right, so that's a little bit 20-minute carve out. Uh, if you'd like, I can show you how it works in terms of making ledger injuries. In other words, what I mean by that is if you want cash uh, that comes out of the 120. That's not a free credit balance. That's a credit balance from a short sale. But if I send you 30, that goes to 90, right? Because there are 120,000 in cash in your margin account. I send you 30, it comes out of there. If you use the $60,000 as a selling power, the short market value goes to 120. And then the uh, credit register goes to 180 because we got just another 60,000 in cash. Again, three or four margin questions. Uh, I find that people have been struggling with these short equations uh, qu practice questions more than test questions, for example. So as I told you, all the vendors go way, way overboard on margins. Man, some vendors, you could actually get a job as a margin clerk you know, based on passing their practice questions. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, remember, inch by inch, Series 7 is a cinch. Yard by yard, uh, Series 7 is hard. And I'll see you for the next installment. I'll probably uh, put this for a premiere before our live stream on a Tuesday. Bye-bye.